I think that's probably the easiest way for anyone to kind of see that, uh, you know, disparity and in, in, in issuance is, is exactly that in terms of uh, a lot of elective specialists, uh, certainly uh, being much better off than the very necessary primary care, emergent care uh, responders, right? Uh, and on top of that, it's sort of a perpetuating issue. Uh, there's, there's fewer staffing and as such, there's fewer people seeking it out. There's fewer pay and uh, that's how you eventually find quick fixes in terms of, I guess, extending the roles and responsibilities of, uh, you know, not to uh, diminish their roles, but lesser degreed, lesser trained, you know, lesser educated healthcare professionals into that role, right? There, aside from being cognitive, and that's not how our healthcare system is reimbursed, that, you know, again, it's discussed in the book. Um, if you want to survive in the healthcare system in the United States, you need to rack up line item bills. E&M visits for thinking, that doesn't rack up any bills. You need procedures. You need to do invasive things. That's how hospital operating margins are kept in the black. You're going to go deeply in the red if you're basing everything on cognitive. In fact, cognitives are loss leaders. You know, they, they, they bring in pools of people who will get sick and then require procedures that float operating budgets. But ID docs have an even further disadvantage, which is that, that there's nothing we do that no one else can do, right? We can do them better. We can pick antimicrobial therapy better. We can treat HIV better. We're, we're good at viruses, but the reality is anything we can do, other doctors can also do, even if less well. So why should the hospital C-suite pay a price premium? You don't wanna be there or we don't have enough for you, no problem. We'll get an MP to prescribe all this. Uh, we can get family medicine trained HIV specialists to do the HIV care. Oh, we don't have enough virologists, no problem. I have emergency medicine and critical care docs. They can handle the COVID-19 patients. We have let our specialty go without owning anything. In contrast, you got a cancer patient, you better have an oncologist or you can't prescribe chemotherapy. Only oncologists can prescribe it. You got a patient who needs a hip surgery, ID docs can't do that, cardiologists can't do that, only the orthopedic surgeon can do that. You need a heart cath, only the cardiologist can do it. There's nothing only we can do. We have not fought to carve out the niche for ourselves in our healthcare system. Let me ask, what, what, at what point does that, I guess, level of ownership begin to take place and when exactly did we pass that in terms of infectious disease specialists? I think it began <clears throat> a long time ago. I think when antibiotics came out and were so effective, they just became baked into popular culture. And so everybody was able to use them. We've never made the case, which we should have been making all along, that these drugs are precious limited resources. And as you waste them, they become less effective. So we shouldn't let anybody, including the NP in the corner drugstore, prescribe them. We should have people require special training to be able to prescribe these drugs. There are other ways that we can carve out market niches for ourselves as well, but we're so busy lobbying the, the rock for an E&M rate increase that we're not doing that, nor are we lobbying for fundamental health care reform, which is actually what the real fix is that's needed. 